Thursday, January 12th, and this is Geek Nights. Tonight, we begin our ongoing in-depth series on how to attend conventions. Let's do this. So, today at work, I spent about half my day working on our forums. Yeah, uh, people might have noticed, because there was a lot of posting going on while you were uh, fiddling with them. And if you didn't notice, that's because you're not on our forums, and you should be. Yeah, the forums are really hopping. I mean, we're not just saying that to try to get you to go. There's actually a lot of people there posting about the show. Yeah, and if you want to, you know, discuss the things we talk about with like-minded people, you should probably go to the forums, and it's a lot of fun, and the more people, the merrier. Plus, we added, well, Scott added, avatars. Avatars. I think it's a lot better than uh, the PHP BB avatars, which are like, they get really big, and they stick out into the page, and I don't know, I always think that people use way too big ones, and they're not uniform, and they're all kind of ugly. The worst, have you ever been on just those unmoderated forums that are out there in the cesspool of the internet? Yep. The ones that don't have restrictions on, like, SIGs. I've seen SIGs that were a full 640 by 480 like, flash animation. Yeah, I can't take that stuff. So, our avatar is just these nice, cute little 32 by 32 pixel dealies. Other things I added to the forum besides avatars are a few new themes. There's a blue theme and a red theme that are new. The yeah, we're thinking about putting the blue theme or some uh, derivative of it on the main site. Yeah, that way the whole the forum will be will appear to be seamlessly integrated with the actual site, which could be kind of cool. I made the blue theme the default because I think it looks better than the default default theme. But if you really want the original default theme, it's still in there, and you can switch it in your uh, account settings or whatever. Also, due to popular demand, meaning three people complained about this, there is now a link back to the site from the forum. Yeah, it might not be obvious, but now in the big white title that says Front Row Crew Forums at the top of the page, if you click on that, it'll take you back to frontrowcrew.com, which you should be going to anyway, even if you, you know, get the podcast via some RSS somewhere. Even though not that many do compared to the people who just download the MP3. Yeah, but everyone visit frontrowcrew.com and there's actual like posts in the blog and other information for you that you should check out and the forum. Yep, and regarding that, I just have one quick question. Whoever's using Winamp to listen to this, like, straight off the feed, I'm curious how you're doing it. Because I look at all my feed statistics every couple days, and of all the different readers that it says, like, contact the RSS and download the files, one of them is Winamp. One, all alone, and it downloads every single episode. Hmm, I wonder. Yeah, I was just curious about that. Because I don't think Winamp has a podcatcher in it. Uh, unless someone made a plugin that does it. Maybe. I don't know, I haven't used Winamp since I switched to Linux. I use it, but I only play MP3s in it, and that's it, and not often either. I mean, I used to use it for Shoutcast, and I know if you give it a URL of an MP3, it'll just play it, so... Mm -hmm. uh, another small change I made to the forum, you'll notice on the top left, after you sign in, there's a little pull-down menu, and you can change the categories in this little menu. And that way, if you, like, if you click on the technology category then only the technology stories will appear, and it's easier than clicking on the categories tab and then clicking on the category you want. You can just use a little pull-down menu. It yeah. makes it a little easier Which is kind of key now that there's a lot of discussions going yeah, on. Yeah, now that there's that. three pages of posts, uh, it's a lot easier to filter out the categories using this pull-down on the side than... Uh, now, going... along with this, we're probably going to add some more categories at some point, because I noticed there aren't that many categories that are useful yet. Yeah, We'll, we'll add more categories. It shouldn't be a problem. Yeah, if you have a really burning desire for us to add a specific one, let us know and we'll think about it. Or maybe we'll just start a, a new thread, category request thread. Yep. The last thing I added is private messaging. But it's not private messaging like on PHPVB or whatever. It's where really cool. It's much better than that. I thought it's called whispering, actually, which is very appropriate to how it works. Basically, when you start a new discussion, you can type in someone's username on the forums... And it'll auto-complete the usernames in case you forget them. So just, like, start typing, like, a letter, and the rest of it will appear. You know, like, Google Suggest or whatever. So I swear to God, if anyone takes the name Rim with, like, a D at the end of it, I'll kill you. Yeah. Um, and then, you know, set your subject and type your message, and you can start your own private discussion with somebody. And the only people who can see it are you and that other person. Now, cooler, you can do that within another discussion. Right. So let's say... Me, Rim, Joe Blow, and Joe Schmo are having a discussion about um, anime. Anime, and Joe Blow and Joe Schmo start having a fanboy rant. Right? 
In the middle of that discussion, I can send a whisper to Rim. I type in Rim when I, I, I reply to it just like I would reply to any message. But in the whisper box, I type Rim, and I say, wow, these two guys are huge fanboys. That'll put a message in that discussion, but only me and Rim will see it. And those Joe Blow and Joe Schmo won't see it when they go and look at that discussion. I guess the technical turn is, is uh, side channel communication. Yeah, you're, you're, it's, you're literally whispering to one other person in the discussion without anyone else seeing it. It's way cool. Yeah, play around with the forum. And obviously, let us know if you find anything broken. We'll fix it right away. Yeah, I don't think anything's broken now. I've pretty much fixed it all. All right. And since we pushed the forum a little bit too much, let me push the rest of our stuff. You can email us feedback. Email still works, and, you know, especially if you're not a forum-type person, you just want to talk to us or, or something like that. Yep, because we used to get, you know, not really negative feedback, but constructive criticism, and we seem to have addressed all the complaints because they stopped coming in. Yep. Anyway, so send emails of, of any sort, audio feedbacks, you know, or anything like that to geeknights at gmail.com. Call our phone number. I mean, if you call it and you leave us a, a message that's even halfway crap, we'll probably play it and then respond to it in some way. Yeah, the phone number is, I'm going to put it on the website eventually when, when I redo the uh, blog part. 508-677-0300. 508 677 Zero three zero zero. So moving on with the news, uh, we talked a lot about the new uh, Mac Intel PCs coming out, mm -hmm. and now there's a lot of questions as to whether or not they're actually going to be able to run Windows. And the short answer is no one knows. The story is is that right now uh, PCs with you know normal Intel AMD processors, whatever, have a BIOS in them. Basic input-output system. Right. That's all that stuff you see when the computer boots before Windows or Linux starts. Yeah. You know, hit F1, and then there's all these options you don't understand. Mm -hmm. That's all that stuff. Um, basically, Apple doesn't use BIOS. Apple uses open firmware, which is more advanced by far. BIOS is really, really old and crappy. It's just so standard and old that we keep using it instead of switching to something new. There's in something even newer called EFI, which is something Intel invented. Extensible Firmware Interface. Yeah. They invented that for those Itanium chips, actually. Which is, isn't that what's in the uh, Mac Tiles? That is what is in the MacBooks, that, with the Intel uh, Duo whatever chips. Now, this raises a big question, because Windows Vista supposedly is going to support this just fine. Mm -hmm. But uh, Windows XP 2000, 98, 311, not a chance. Nope, those do not support it. However, uh, Windows XP 64-bit edition supposedly does support EFI. Of course, that ray of hope is uh, shattered immediately by the fact that uh, these aren't 64-bit processors. Yeah, the Intel Core Duo is not a 64-bit processor. So the question is, will somebody... Will, you know, Windows 2000 XP might just work. We don't even know. Uh, if they don't work, will somebody create some sort of patch or mod to make them work? I say probably yes, definitely. Will Linux work? Almost certainly. But it, it could be that you just can't run Windows 2000 or XP and that you will need to have Windows Vista to run on these Apple books. And keep in mind that it's not 100% that Windows Vista will work. Because yeah. Phil Schiller, the Apple guy, who the only one who responded to this so far, said that they, do, they don't sell or support Windows itself, but at the same time, they're not preventing anyone specifically from using Windows. So they're not trying to keep Windows off, but they're not trying to make Windows work. They're just kind of ignoring it. Yeah. So you, basically, it might work, and it's a pretty good bet that it will, but I wouldn't actually put any money down. See, I would kind of put money down because I point out two things. One, EFI, at least in its raw form, but no one knows if they're going to implement this on these specific boxes, can fully emulate BIOS. Oh, see, I read something like that somewhere and I was a little confused. So it can emulate BIOS. Yes. However, we don't know if these will do it or if that emulated BIOS will work 100%. Because Windows relies on the BIOS more than you'd think. Mm. Two... The reason I'll bet that any Windows is going to work is that, one, Grub works just fine with EFI. Mm -hmm. 